Hi everyone, I'm Sally Eves and a very warm welcome to this special feature, which I think really brings to the fore what leadership in technology is all about, and especially from a diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging perspective, something really cl close to heart to both of us here today. And to this end, I also think visibility really matters. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce a leader in technology and a good, really good person. You know, I've heard so much about you, Cheryl. I can't wait to dive into things with you today. So without further ado, it's Cheryl Ragland, CMO at Spiron. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Oh, Great. absolutely. You too. Absolutely. And, and again, part of my you know, real passion for this is I know a lot of the activities you've been involved in, they're really close to heart. And again, sharing about this, I think it matters so much. So you know, without further ado, you know, I talk about the person behind the tech quite a lot. And to start us off, perhaps you just share a little bit more with the audience about yourself, your role at Spiron, and perhaps you know, like a moment of meaning along the way, because I think those nuggets and sharing about that can make a difference to so many people. Yeah, great. So again, my name is Cheryl Ragland. I have um, been CMO of Spirant Communications for about four years now. I have two wonderful children who are grown practically, uh, 23 and 20, so um, have been keeping me busy. Uh, and what I am responsible for at Spirant as CMO, I really cover everything from a global perspective. So I look at anywhere from PR, AR, influencer relations, campaigns, both digital events, webinars, um, brand management, obviously, and then of course, operations, marketing operations, which is so important as well as really tracking that data and making sure that we get that information in about what's working and not working. So I cover the gamut across the globe. I love that. I love that. And kind of that gamut across the globe, we were talking about that or those diversity of activities and experiences actually kind of brings me on to another theme. Because I think there's so many varieties or differences in routes into technology or data as an industry, as a career. And I think that's really fascinating, particularly like the non-linear paths in. And I love to share that in some of the mentoring activities I get involved at. And also, you know, different skills make a difference. I kind of imagine a toolbox really, or, or like a painting canvas and all these different kind of things you can tap into. Right. We need that variety. So I wonder if we could share a bit more about your route into tech, you know, what attracted you and what's really empowered you as a woman in tech? Yeah. So I uh, got into tech right out of college. Um, I wouldn't say I had everything figured out and I knew what I wanted to do exactly. So um, that's OK, by the way, uh, not to have everything. I started in sales. So I actually worked for AT&T for a while, sold um, long distance service to small companies and I think it was really important for me as I continued my career into marketing, is I think learning how to sell a product or a company is so important because until you sit that in that seat across from that customer, having to explain it, I think it really helps to have that sales experience as I went into marketing later on. And my really path was not necessarily linear. I did operations. I did product marketing for a while. Um, I did communications. So I really got a taste of everything and decided, you know, marketing was was really where I wanted to be. Yeah, I love that. Love that. So many flavors, isn't there, in terms yeah. of the roles that you can get into in tech, isn't it? Which I find really fascinating. And I love to stress that. Uh, right. You know, we talk about STEM a lot, don't we? And I often kind of kind of move beyond STEM to STEAM, so kind of arts in their broader sense, because yeah. again, I think that's really, really valuable too. Different routes in, but also different skills make a difference as well. Yeah. And I think it's really important to take every job you've had and to be able to learn from it. It may Absolutely. not be where you end up. It may not be where you want to go necessarily wholeheartedly, but you've learned something and you've taken something from it to help you in the next position. So I think that's really, really important to not always feel that you have to take that linear path because you're learning with, with everything you do. Definitely. We're learning what you're enjoying. And it's through that experience, that experiential learning makes that difference, doesn't it? And being curious. I love that. I couldn't right. agree more. Um, love, another thing I found, you know, makes a real difference as well um, is around mentorship and also kind of moving beyond that to sponsorship as well. And it really does take that ecosystem, doesn't it, of coming together of allies and mentors to really help lift everyone up. How important is that to you? And I, I know um, you do a lot in that in this area. So, again, I want to really shine a light on why mentorship matters so much collectively and to yourself personally. Right. No, I'm really passionate about this. I have, you know, growing up in tech in my career, I very much was probably one of the only women in the room at times. 
right? So I feel very passionate about mentoring the younger women that are coming up the chain because to have that ability to talk to someone who's been through it and done it, I think is very, very helpful because you get a different perspective. But I think, you know, things are changing so much in the workplace the last couple of years or, you know, and they will continue with AI coming into it. It's important to have people who are, you know, able to give you a different perspective, um, but also help you in answering some of the questions that you may have. So I know that I spend a lot of time, I've taught at some local colleges, my alma mater um, as well, to make sure that I can share my experience and, and things that you need to look out for as you go into the workplace and how you continue to build your uh, skill set, really, um, as you go throughout. So it's hugely important. I would recommend that to anybody, whatever company you're in, make sure that you're looking for those allies um, and that can really help and support you. So very important. Definitely, definitely. It makes such a difference. I think we all have those moments where we reflect back of you know, a particular conversation or being put forward for something, you know, whether it's a panel or a, or a job opportunity, but somebody kind of having that confidence in you and kind of sharing that and, and, and going kind of beyond mentorship to sponsorship as well. I, you, I think we all have little moments like that that have made such a difference. So yeah, love what you're doing there. Yeah. So, so important. And also just thinking back on that as well, just thinking of Maria, um, who was a former man manager of mine in telecoms, um, where, you, where I kind of have a CTO background basically. And she right. had that role for me. So I I'm just going to kind of put a shout out to Maria, just thinking back on that too. Yeah, pay it forward too, right? Like every time you have mentors in your life, how great it is and then how great it is to sort of share that knowledge exactly. back with other people. It's important. I totally agree. And kind of on that on that setting as well, um, as I said, you know, I was a former CTO in, in the telecom sector and obviously with your role, CMO in telecoms as well. I'd love to kind of look at how your role has changed here as well, because obviously so much is happening in the marketing scene, particularly in telecoms in the last few years. So what have you seen there as the biggest kind of catalyst for those changes and how are you supporting customers and negating those and supporting their marketing messages and strategies too? Again, so much dynamism here. I'd love to just kind of get your take on how your role has changed and what you're doing to support that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right that marketing has changed. Um, it's continuing to change. It will continue to change. Um, as I mentioned before, the AI, really, I think COVID changed a lot of the impact. Um, I know I had just entered into Spiron at the time and a lot of the traditional marketing activities or tactics that we could use like events were no longer there, right? So you had to go digital. Um, I think social media definitely picked up. People were looking more and more towards social. So we wanted to make sure that we provided an outlet to the company there to share our story, um, as well as influencer relations, util utilizing people like yourself that come out that can give us a much broader reach than we could ever do as just a company, really getting that message out. I'm a firm believer in an integrated marketing approach. I think that that is really important. It's not going to be one tactic you do. It's going to be several tactics because how I relate to something is probably very different to how you relate to it. And that consistency of message and that long-term right ability to stay in the game and keep saying the story over and over again, because you're getting people that come in for just a second, right, to, to look at what you're doing. And you need to be able to be very clear, um, very concise, and I think inspiring, especially, it's been an interesting thing for me is balancing that technical um, expertise that the company has with pairing that with more of the marketing solutions, benefit type messaging. I think that complements each other very well. And I think it cu helps customers if they look at, at what they want to go by, how they're dealing with problems of their own to, to remind them of the benefit of what they're buying constantly. And then, of course, pairing them with the technical is always great. But I think that's been something that I've definitely uh, tried to complement each other as I've been inspiring, especially. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think one, one thing that always remains the same is the compelling story and the, the human-led aspect to the story as well. So what, what I've seen really powerful is when we've had marketing that really brings together in a very authentic way impact that has shared value so you're demonstrating you know the innovation for business but also the contagion effect that, that that impact we can have for society as well and when we get stories like that in particular for certain certain audiences you know with gen z gen z for example when that purpose is to the fore the difference you see in the response is is, is really noticeable so i think that i totally agree with what you're saying there and the kind of one thing that remains the same i think is is that human story and if not more so today 
Um, yes. I've definitely, definitely seen that. And being able to leverage other customers yes. that are using right our solutions, that's what's really going to get customers excited and understand how we fit into it. So humanizing it is so important, but making sure, and it doesn't have to be just a press release. It could be a video. Video is becoming more and more important. Um, so I think those ways of getting them to relate in to what you do, them personally, again, totally important. Very, very important. Definitely. Meet, meet them where, where they are. Meet them where your customers are, where their home exactly. is. Definitely. That's exactly. the thing. Yeah. But especially on certain channels as well. Well, I think the other thing I would notice is maybe a kind of a blurring of lines more and more as well around um, B2B and consumer marketing as well, particularly that's on certain channels. Point. So that's another interesting one, perhaps. Yeah, such a great point. I, I was reading something just the other day about how TikTok now can uh, be used in B2B marketing, which I think is fascinating, right? Probably years ago, we would never have thought about that. How Instagram absolutely. is becoming more important um, as well. So I absolutely agree. There is that blurring of lines between where you would have considered traditional consumer type tactics with what we're seeing in, in B2B. And we need to not forget, we are dealing with humans, whether we're B2B or consumer, it is about how the person actually relates to it. So something so, I know I stress with my team. I love that. I love that. And you mentioned team there. And, and again, people right to the fore of what we're talking about at the moment. And I'd love to drill in your experience there in team leadership in terms of kind of data driven culture and how we enable that. Because I think it's so critical. You know, going back to our starter today about how we can embed inclusion, diversity, equity. And for me, this belonging kind of if you imagine kind of that hierarchy of needs, I kind of go up to that as the top of it. But how are you kind of enabling that? I'd love to share some of the experiences of yourself and obviously working with Spirant to support the team and build that culture that enables you know, real optimization of the technology too. Right. Now, you know, I think a lot of times it can become about the leader, right? About who the leader is, who they're leading their, their organization. In fact, I've come to find it's all about the people that I hire, right? Um, and if I can get the right team around me, um, and that complement each other. So I think to your point about diversity, right? I don't want everybody thinking the same way. I want people to complement each other and to be able to disagree and get to that common goal. But I think it's it's really, really important to take the time to build the right people and to get different skill sets on the team. Everybody is going to be good at something different. And that's fantastic. Um, and I always say to my team, if I'm the smartest person in the room, then right? That's not where I want to go. I want you guys to challenge me and come back. So I think building that culture of making sure your team feels like they can come in and voice their opinions and that they each have a voice in what we're going to go do and that they're all aligned on the goal, right? And the objective I think is important. Data just helps us do that, right? Because then we're all looking at the same Bible. We're all looking at the same scorecard that helps us but, um, you know, really that we're all feeling like we're rowing in the same direction is hugely important. Um, so I feel very lucky right now. It's fine. I have a fantastic team uh, that I work with. Um, and, you know, it, it has helped us as we've gone through COVID, as we've gone through different tech changes. You need the people to be able to be resilient, deal with ambiguity, right? Because not everything is going to be spelled out. Uh, so I think that's another important trait that I have a really good team that does that. How do we respond fast and quick to things. So that's um, very important is the team around you. That's that's hugely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we often talk about agility or ambidexterity, don't we, in terms of organizations, but it's much more than that, isn't it? As a team level, as you were describing, and at individual level too, and supporting that, I think that agility to change is one of the biggest skills of our time in many ways. So I couldn't yes. agree more. It really, really matters. And celebrating successes, I think, again, at team level, massively important too, and opportunities to invest in skilling and upskilling and reskilling. I'm finding, you know, both from personal experience, but from all the research coming out at the moment, Moment, skills investment matters so much to, to everybody in roles, you know, whether that's data literacy or AI fluency, et cetera, as well.